Hey guys, what's up? Look at my hair. It's like, wait, yeah, that side. It's like sticking up. Anyway, that's what happens when you uh, don't even look at yourself in the mirror before you do a video and you realize that your hair is all sticking up and everything. Um, anyway, so uh, this uh, this video, is, uh, Joe JG uh, gives a good comment here. He says, what are your thoughts about on w uh, WPF and do you develop a WPF? So WPF is like a, uh, a desktop solution for uh, .NET, so C Sharp .NET, you can do it with C++ or any other uh, .NET compatible language, but WPF, uh, let me just see if I can give you a background, uh, stands for Windows Presentation Foundation, so he's asking if I've ever used it. It's basically the successor to WinForms, which was what we uh, used to use back in the day, but well before I was a programmer, so I say we as in you know programmers in general, but I, I didn't really do too much Win, uh, WinForms development. Uh, it's, a, it's a major nightmare, but uh, WPF is definitely the successor to WinForms if you're going to be using Visual Studio and C Sharp and kind of Microsoft's tooling. Uh, and it uses the, um, the, the XAML uh, front-end language, which was like an XML layout type of language, very similar to if you've ever done Android development where they kind of use uh, a similar type of thing. Um, so, you know, there's, some, there's definitely some learning curve there. Uh, anytime you're building a desktop app like that uh, for distributable software, then uh, you need to, you know, run into um, you run into situations obviously where you have to have uh, a lot of uh, multi-threaded programming, so you're not blocking the main UI thread. So it can be it can be uh, fairly difficult, I think, to create some software. So the question was, have I ever used it? What do I think of it? I think it's just fine. Um, WPF hasn't really been, I would say, like actively developed in the sense that that Microsoft is doing anything more than just kind of supporting what they already have. Uh, for everything I hear about WPF is just kind of like, you know, they, they maintain a small team that just kind of, uh, you know, updates and does bug fixes and releases and security patches and things like that. But uh, as far as I know, they're not really like focusing a ton um, on trying to, you know, to, to extend that. But I could be wrong uh, as far as the .NET uh, core is concerned and what, what they're doing with the open source side of that uh, equation. So the, the, the question that boils down, have I ever used it? And the, and the thing is, is uh, yes, I have. Uh, a couple years ago, probably 2013, maybe 2012, uh, I had actually written some, uh, some, some automation software that could automate your social networking sites, like uh, uh, specifically Pinterest was one that, that was kind of cropping up. And uh, I built this bot where you could like literally log in and it would just start following and pinning and like and you would get like a bunch of followers and stuff like that. I thought I could like sell it for a couple bucks for people that wanted to, to automate that process. And um, one of the things I ended up running into, and this is kind of a side note, nothing to do with uh, WPF, is number one, the, the idea was a terrible idea. You never want to uh, build products that violate terms of service or anything like that. It's a good way to get sued. Uh, number two, the um, uh, when you run into you know distributable software, especially on a .NET uh, using .NET and Microsoft technologies, uh, I ran into the situation where like uh, you have to basically buy like uh, certificates, almost like SSL, where you're like certifying. Uh, that you're a trusted um, software provider because back then it was like Windows 8 and uh, Windows 8 was flagging the software every time you try to download it because I didn't have like you know the official channels approved from from my company to be able to sell software and stuff like that so um, that was one thing that I was really bummed about when I was trying to build distributable software and realizing that I basically had to you know pay off companies to, to say hey I'm legit and all this stuff because um, otherwise you then have to you know post host your stuff on um, you know, people would get those those messages. Hey, this software can't be trusted. Blah blah blah, uh, and and nobody you know trusts that sort of thing, obviously, and, and it doesn't look professional. So that was my main experience with WPF. But as far as you know, building an executable like an MSI uh, installer, so I could just you know you have one file, you download, and you just double click on it, it installs on your machine and everything. Uh, I did. You know, I used WPF for that, and I think that that, that worked fairly well. So what do I recommend though uh, these days? And and honestly. Um, the, the, the thing that I think most people should try to be using for, for native desktop development, like if you're still trying to build distributable software, uh, is, is this Chromium embedded project because this allows you to use um, you know, the, the Chrome engine to, to, to take advantage of, of JavaScript, HTML, CSS for your UI. So if you have any sort of web development experience, you can use this Chromium project uh, to, to build some really cool stuff. And, and when I say really cool stuff, like um, for instance, uh, Spotify, so if you were to download Spotify on your desktop computer, whether it's Mac or, or Windows, you're going to get, um, they, they're actually using the, the Chromium project uh, for, for their UI look and feel. Now, as far as some of their proprietary 
uh, code base. I understand that they're still using a lot of C++ and even assembly language and stuff like that, but um, the actual UI and stuff that you're actually interacting with on your machine is mostly the, the Chromium, the HTML, JavaScript, CSS stuff, uh, which is really good. Another thing too is like, um, on top of the Chromium project is this Electron project. So this is something that I'm definitely interested in. It's using Node, uh, but it's also using Chromium. So once again, you can build native desktop applications using something like this and familiar technology like JavaScript, HTML, CSS, um, to, to handle some of the shittiest parts of UI development, which like I said, WinForms, WPF is all, it's a friggin' nightmare trying to get all that stuff uh, working correctly, at least in my opinion. Now, I've never been a software developer as in, as in like, you know, distributable desktop applications and things like that. So maybe just being a web developer, I naturally gravitate towards this sort of thing. But uh, Electron, like th this is definitely something that you want to check out. Uh, in addition to that, uh, one of the most popular products uh, of late, really the last couple of years, uh, and something that I definitely recommend that you guys check out as well. In fact, I want to create a Slack channel for my, uh, for this YouTube channel so I can communicate with you guys via Slack. Uh, but Slack is a great product for uh, collaboration and communication amongst teammates. Uh, you can even automate your build processes and things using Slack. Uh, but the Slack desktop application uh, is also written using um, Electron. So that, that's pretty sweet. So you can definitely build uh, some, some very successful uh, installable software that you can uh, distribute. And um, I don't know, man, that, that's definitely uh, something I, I would check out personally, something I plan on checking out. Um, that said, dude, Slack, man, sometimes that, that joker just crashes on Windows, man. Um, but hopefully that has nothing to do with, with Chromium. Uh, it could, though. I'm not sure. <laughs> but either way, man, uh, I would definitely prefer that route. Uh, then, then you also have, um, well, really, that's, that's going to be, that's, that's where I'm going to leave this video and these, uh, these examples here. So, uh, let me know if you guys have any questions or anything. Make sure you subscribe, vote up my videos. I appreciate it. And you guys have a good day. Bye. Hey guys, so a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day. So this video is also sponsored by Eduonics Learning Solutions. And in the description tab below, you're going to find two links for Eduonics. And both of them are at a 50% discounted rate. So if you'd like to have money off, like I do, then uh, definitely be sure to check that out. But one of the projects they have here is uh, Projects in Laravel is the name of the course, and it says Learn Laravel Building 10 Projects. So you're going to build 10 different projects in this Laravel course. It's 50% off. You just have to visit the link, sign into your account, click Buy Now, and the coupon code will already be applied. So you just have to pick your payment option and go from there. Um, that is for learning Laravel, which is the popular PHP uh, framework that everybody seems to be talking about these days. The next uh, course that they're promoting this month, which is also at a 50% discounted rate, is the ability to choose 10 different courses here. So uh, you can choose 10 different courses. They're all at a discounted rate of, of uh, a flat rate of, of uh, $49.50 for 10 different courses here. And you can choose from any one of these uh, 75 courses that, that they have available. So once again, same thing, just click buy now. Once you select your 10 different courses, um, basically you go through, you click uh, 10 different courses and two more courses to unlock the bundle. There you go. Click buy now. And once again, you just pick your payment option and you're good to go. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you guys subscribe and vote on my uh, videos if you would, please. I appreciate that and have a good day, guys. Bye.